Hey there YouTube, this is uh, BK Budakos here with a little uh, tuning video. So today we'll be tuning the 2010 Chevrolet Camaro SS. A little Bumblebee car from, you know, Transformers. So, uh, I guess we'll just call this a build or something, or your daily driver, or your daily car. Maybe a car review for drifting, because that's basically all I do. I don't do anything else. I guess I'll just pick this little silver, silvery color, and then we'll just get to it. All right, gonna go straight to upgrading. Every single size of, every single size of load, and then swap. Uh, I actually have been experimenting with the stock engine quite often, so I may just uh, leave it. As, may just leave it in there. You never know. I don't really see the difference between these two, so let's keep it at the single. Let's check the horsepower. See how much horsepower you can make out of a uh, the uh, stock Chevy engine or for the Camaro. It doesn't look like you can get much out of it like you can with the uh, Corvette engine, but I never really heard this engine before, so I guess we'll just keep with the 800 horsepower. Yeah, 800 horsepower. So, let's continue on by upgrading all the way. You can add the roll cage if you guys please, but I personally do not like the roll cage. I, it adds weight, and I hate having weight. Waste my biggest enemy. Drive train, just once again, keep upgrading all the way, all the way, all the way. And then, if you don't want to use drag tires, you don't have to. No one's forcing you. I prefer drag tires because it just seems balances the car a lot better than it does with the stock tires. Stock tires, and I can slide a little more than the drag tires, so I'd rather just run with drag tires. Front tire whip to stabilize the car. Don't add any in the rear. That'll just basically make it where it is. <laughs> this is going to basically make it where it is now. Uh, flight for normal. There's nothing really you can add for the. Uh, you know, body kiss wise, I guess you didn't have one, so I guess I'll just leave it the way it is right now. No need to change any of that. Except, you know, I always change the rims. I always like changing my rims. So, there was this one pair of special rims I always put on all my cars, but I completely forgot the, uh, uh, what's it called? The, the name of it. I don't know where it is. It's like disappeared. And knowing me, I, lo I love deep dish rims. If I can put deep, deep dish rims on my Lexus, I, I so would. You know, I was gonna keep looking in for some reason. For some, I think this might be it. Bingo! Here we are. And for some odd reason, my Lexus decided to all of a sudden start getting good, good gas mileage because I've been going this this second week. And I'm only at half a tank, and it's I didn't it's, it wasn't even filled up all the way. So I guess it's, I guess it's pretty good that it's not being all poopy like it was before. Then tuning options. Uh, just like always, PSI is still the same. I know this doesn't make any sense to put tire width in front of your car, but yet you max out the PSI and make it where you don't have any grip on the front. But for some reason, adding front tire width in the car just stabilizes it and makes it a lot better than just dripping with no tire width at all. And if you guys, I'm pretty sure once I keep doing this and keep making videos showing how I tune these cars, eventually uh, people are just going to hate it because in Forza 3, no one complained about this until people started doing it and they didn't understand how they did it. The only reason why I hate it. Or they just, or they're too lazy to adapt. Now, for a lot of horsepower, usually you use uh, long, long gears. I said short ones. If it's like a little bit of horsepower, you short. Once again, if you prefer positive camber, put it all the way to the front. Narrow camber, same thing applies all the way to the front. Or maybe just put it at at uh, 1.5. That's what I do for negative camber. So positive. And our base. This is my base setup. If I like it, then I'll just leave it the way it is. I'm gonna start basing my teams a lot better than I did before. Then. Now then, I have been testing something out, don't follow this. Uh, originally, just keep it right here. But for me, I'm trying to see something else. I'm trying to stiffen up my rear and then make my front soft. It's always worth to try to find something. You never know what you'll find. So, you don't really have to follow what I'm doing here, except that if you watch my other videos, just try to balance them out a little bit, but always make your rear a little stiffer. For, uh, for no reason why. I can't really give you a good explanation, no reason why I would prefer it that way but that's just how I am and breaking all these to the front because you know everyone loves brake drifters right not really so a little test track in the valley I will be changing up the tracks pretty soon uh, so you can get a little more uh, better results because right now it doesn't matter what kind of car I have I'm testing out the valley because I've done it so many times that I can do it do it with a stock car regardless of the tune so pretty soon in the next video I'll be using Suzuki E-Circuit because I barely uh, 
you know, I barely play on that track, so, yeah. So here we go. For some reason, it sounds the same as the, the old engine. I don't know, I can't remember. Yeah, I haven't been using the stock engine quite often. I don't know. And since I've been using the stock engine, I've almost pulled a uh, top 10 with Daytona Torino for rivals the first time I tried it. And then I hit the wall and rage quit because I lost nine, I lost a lot of points. So I was pretty upset when that happened. You can see that fifth gear should be dead. So you may want to only use this car for like fourth gear. And to get hit like a big uh, you know, a big point, you can see the cars are having a real big problem with the overseer. Having problems sticking. Now what I've noticed is with this uh with these differential settings is it feels like it like adjusts the torque or the power that's going through the rear for some reason. So I always leave my deceleration low because I like using all my power. But sometimes if you want to have your car a little stabilized, put it at 70 and work from there and then you'll feel a difference. Or you should if you don't feel a difference then something's wrong. But I usually feel a difference. But you can you can just take these no, I'm just gonna leave that there. Hold on. You can just if you guys want to you can charm, but I'd rather you not. I keep in mind this car doesn't really have all the power that I usually drift with. It's only 100 horsepower off, so it shouldn't really be that big of a deal. Not to mention the uh, lousy, uh, lousy camber and all this stuff hasn't really been tuned yet, so I guess I'll just put that down here. And now we're gonna try it, because it has oversteer, and I know I have to put it oversteer. See, it's working pretty well, no problems at all. Like I said, once you just have different settings, it's completely such working. If you didn't notice, there wasn't any of that ticking sound. You know, that wasn't really that sound because I was riding the, you know. Remember I told you guys last time about the little controller tip? That's what I was doing. I, ha I really wanted to try this on simulation, so I'm probably about to back out and try the simulation because what I've noticed is it doesn't seem to be as responsive as a uh, cosmetic. So, I know this is stupid, please don't mind me doing this during the middle of this video, I just kind of forgot to do it. But, I've been anxious to try simulation with a controller, I haven't tried it yet. So, like I said, I'm just trying it. <laughs> if I can get used to this, I would, no doubt about it, keep drifting with simulation on a controller, because if you can weight transfer extremely fast and keep steady drift going on, it's perfect. Because if you're, if you're using a wheel, I don't think you can keep a extremely steady drift, uh, you know. Uh, on cosmetic, so it's gonna be very, very sharp. So I gotta be very, very sensitive with this, or careful with this with some of the wall. And there's a little uh, tapping I do. I can't do that. I have to ride it. Right now I'm riding my. Uh, oh, basically, you know, like, remember I told you I keep pushing my uh, steering and my analog stick all the way up. That's what I'm doing. It's it's a lot better than tapping, I'll tell you that. Yes, I actually, I'm on simulation, you guys can see, I'm different simulation with a controller, and this is the difficult thing I've ever done in my life, it's so, it's really sharp. Yeah, that's really sharp. I was saying, anyway, it feels like it has so much grip in the front, I don't know why. But I, I do think it's possible to get used to. Once you get in the middle of the drift, it really isn't that bad. And I guess since I've been kind of experienced with this game for a while, simulation isn't really that big of a deal to me anymore. You can still kind of tap it, but right now I'm not trying to tap it just by judging the way the car feels. Maybe weight transfer and stuff because it's just too sharp and I don't really, you know, weight transfer that fast. And then right side, between the simulation, the weight transfer will be cut also at least about by half, or maybe more. And saying it that, uh, that means since your weight transfer is cut in half, I would say, like the speed of it, you'll be able to get like an extra 200 points or so, and yes, those points do matter once you reach your peak. Once you reach your peak or something, you're begging to get any amount of points you can possibly get. Because I mean, I was on Fuji, and my weight, my weight transfer was a little slow, so I was just hoping I, I could just weight transfer a little faster so I can get those extra points. I tried a few other times, failed, rage quit, and I got pretty mad, and so I just stopped. <laughs> so that's the reason why I stopped doing video boards. And for everyone who keeps buying my tunes, thank you. I really appreciate it because originally, I just each day I'll get about thirty to fifty thousand uh, tunes. I've already accepted my 
uh, monies that I got today. So that's the reason why, uh, you know, that's the reason why uh, this one says a thousand. I have over that super tune is about to hit uh, one thousand downloads pretty soon. So I really appreciate you guys actually. Not this one. I really appreciate you guys actually downloading my tunes. Makes me feel like what I'm doing is actually worth it. See, seven seven hundred eighty-two downloads. And my GTR that I have here, oh, there it is, there's a GTR, it's like 500 downloads, sweet, 500 downloads, that's pretty good. So, once again, I really appreciate you guys actually trying out my tunes, if you don't like them, I, you know, if you don't like them, I guess I could try harder and make you like them, but, it's like I said, I don't drift a positive camera, I mean, I don't drift a negative camera, you guys know why, because, <laughs> it's just, I, I hate following the crowd, I like being different, and now, I'm, I don't know a lot of people who, uh, who drifts with the setup I do unless you were to download my tunes or copy the way I to my car, obviously. So, I'm just gonna keep waiting to the inside lobby. If we have to wait, I'm just going to, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to wait. I'm popping my mic, I don't wanna disturb anybody in this j -Pong guy. I actually just left this lobby not too long ago. And apparently the race has started since there are a few people on lap one. So I guess I will be splicing this video, so I'm gonna stop it from right now and I'll start back up later. So whenever that happens, I'll catch you guys catch you guys on you know whenever I start back up, whenever the race is done. Alright YouTube and we're back. I originally just finished the commentary, but or like a little test with this car, but apparently I clicked picture and not record. So that was a waste of time. So, but either way, the other races are kind of ruined because uh, we had a guy who decided to cross the line. And how I am now, if you cross, I'm just going to ram you regardless of what you say. Unless you need to apologize when you cross. But if you do not, then <laughs> I'm just going to pull on the car and ram the whole entire race to show you how I felt. I'm just going to finish the race. Might as well. <laughs> I mean, it's either that or they're going to quit. I don't think I'm not. I'd rather take, rather give, give them a chance. And uh, he's about to race again. I didn't bother kicking him out. And this Corvette is about to start racing. Just letting you guys know, my my car's angle locking for some reason. And I don't like my car angle locking without my you know without my consent. <laughs> it should not be angle locking by itself. That's kind of bad. But overall, the car is is pretty good. If they can angle lock, you know, it's a car. It should probably lower the rear psi. I think it'll help out a bit because right now it feels like it's up too high and I, it feels a little bit uh, uncontrollable. I have to keep feathering it. I like my cars like this, gas it and just be like that. And not to mention my differential settings have not been adjusted. I never did bother that. I should have done that. But overall, it feels pretty steady. It feels like a great car. And what I was talking about earlier is I was talking about, uh, I don't want to hit this guy. He's kind of closing my little line. But, uh, uh, I was talking about the different tires and saying how drag tires, different tires, sports, stock, all that does not affect uh, the way you drift. It, it's just an excuse. I've already, I've already texted out with me, my friend Panda, I think a long time ago, and there was actually no difference whatsoever. So please stop, stop giving that excuse saying, oh, I'm only doing bad because of drifting tires. That's not the reason why you're doing that. You're doing bad because you're not feeling it. The reason why. I mean, I had those days and I would mess up. I don't know why. Uh, I never been on the car, been on the driver, never the car. You see, seen the stuff I drift. It's clearly, clearly not the car. It's always the driver, unless the car is broken or something like that. Then you can understand. You see, we have a little competition in here. He's pulling a 48,000, I'm pulling 50,000, which is my highest lap at all, about 9,000 points off. But that's only the Hennessy Venom. So on the bright side, the car does feel pretty cool, but sadly, I'm not gonna be able to finish the race because if you have a guy racing. That uh, that guy I was ramming last race. I can understand why he would race, but I mean, I'm just gonna ram even more. We're not gonna be able to finish the race. I don't care if I don't finish uh, when I'm ramming somebody. When I'm drifting, I do kind of care. As of right now, when I know you're doing it on purpose, I'm not gonna get upset about it. When it's by accident, I would always get upset. But if you apologize, you know, it, it's all cool. I love people who would rather apologize and just, you know, keep driving on like nothing happened. Bro, and you got in the trophy car, you could have passed me if you ever watched the video. I really wouldn't mind. I'm gonna let you pass. I know you're faster and I don't know. Really, really, really know what you have going on. Here we go, bro. Yeah. you. But yeah. Mirror feels great. I think we're gonna do a little inside view here. 
guess I just switched can of use during drift. I lost my own. You see my steering wheel. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good with it, keeping all the kind of speed. Well, I was. And yes, I actually am adjusting my wheel right now. And what I've noticed about cosmetic, cosmetic feels like it's just one way or the other. It's like a button. It's not pressure sensitive like uh, simulation. Is. That, that's what I think I've been noticing. I mean, if it is, it's extremely slow. It's not as fast as simulation is. So that's why steering wheels, you know, <laughs> that's the basic reason why it's made for steering wheels. You turn slow with it. But some people, you know, I can't really say that because there are some people who go pretty fast. This guy is, I don't know what he's doing. I can't see him because I'm in, I can't read. I can't drift like that. <laughs> Whoops. If you were trying to figure out what I was doing, I was trying to uh, use the right analog to, to control my camera view, and I'm not ready for that. But I've been just moving such a long time, I think I should learn how to uh, start controlling my cars like that. Also, I want to learn if I can drift in university. I wonder if I can just do one track, it doesn't matter which kind of track, and not, nothing like test track or anything like that, but a track where I can just keep looking backwards like that. And just take a corner and just keep drifting without without a problem. That's some hope I can do. I don't know when, I'm not sure if that's even possible for me, but I just pulled a crap out of 45,000. So I gotta drift the outside view next, I'll take a step in my game, so I'm not trying to lose. But if it finishes, it's not gonna matter. I think I went too fast. I went too fast. I'm starting off. No, no, I'm not starting off. So now, the best part about having a fast car is that. You wouldn't would really splat up at that time, but you would have to go so much faster just to take that corner. Unlike me, I could just go slow better and get for miles, and I could have to pursue it fast. And then just check my phone, and yes, I am going to record, thankfully. <laughs> I thought I forgot to switch it from camera to uh, looking at power. So, and for everyone watching my videos, I hope you guys understand that my car is built for points. It's not built for camming, because I don't like camming in this game. I'm hoping to try it in GT5, maybe I'll change my mind about it. Maybe, but by the looks of it, I'm hoping. I think GT5 is basically like an anti troll game. I don't think you can troll anyone in GT5 because you can't really ram anybody unless it's like a soft ram. Whenever I've noticed, like at low speeds, you can touch them, but anything like over like five miles per hour in closing, like you, you just go right through them. That's something I like about it as so far as, as the reviews have looked up. And I'm pretty sure the game modes you can you click like realistic drifting or I think it's called simulation. Not drifting. It's called like, like simulation racing. I don't really know too much about it, so I apologize if I'm wrong. But that's just about it. Uh, sorry about like, Atari to get off topic, but this Camaro, it feels okay. It's not bad. I mean, I am using the the, uh, the uh, stock mode to keep that guy keep, keep that in mind. More horsepower the better for point shifting, that's, that's what I say, but the horsepower doesn't really matter. I saw about the weight of the car as well, I can drift that Dawson to C-Class, some you guys seen me score all points with that C-Class. I was pulling the scores you see an average Joe in this game. Well, not actually, not even average, actually, especially when you're beating people with the C-Class. I went too slow, as you guys can see, so I kind of messed it up. So. I would say take the differential, put it back, put it to 25 to 35 percent for deceleration. We keep the uh, acceleration at 100 percent because I can feel that my car is a little weak on weight transferring and flowing through the corners. So what it does is, I I would say that it um, lowers the torque or the power that goes to the rear or that goes to the wheels of your car. That's just that's just by my experience. That's just what I'm guessing. Cause whenever I twinkle with that, I usually feel a massive difference sometimes. So I think that may be the reason why it is behaving in such ways. And thankfully, this guy learned his lesson. He didn't really even erase his time. Now he finally stopped. So, okay, now we're all good. Okay, you can see everybody's here. There you go. Bam. Finish race. Now we can all finish. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my little review. This car is pretty good. I actually like it. I always want to make, well, I've been waiting a while to make it, so I didn't want to make another video. I didn't want to make two videos in one day or whatever, so I decided to wait, wait, wait a little bit. And then something else came up, made a different video, and kept waiting and waiting. But overall, this car is an okay, uh, it's an, it's an okay car. It's not bad for a stock engine. You guys know I don't drift a lot of horsepower. I mean, you guys know I'm not used to drifting a lot of horsepower, but. I just prefer the last engine is mo uh, not necessarily going to be the best one. 
because I've kind of proved myself wrong with the Mazda Miata. I figured out that if I would used the stock engine, I would have gained an extra 100 pounds of torque and only lost 30 horsepower from the racing engine. So that extra 100 pounds of torque took a big, it, it, it was a big, it was a big step, big difference, and it really helped me out the drifting because I just the car would just die out. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if this helped you out with learning how to tune or whatever, then please tell me, please tell so. Or post in a comment if you guys want a special cartoon and I'll make a video. I'm not sure when, I'll probably do it tomorrow. Maybe a video a day about this. And once again, make sure you guys like that one video of that cops, with that uh, uh, tandeming thing. 15 likes, and then I'll make the uh, Forza Horizon cop number video. I've actually figured out a way to do it. This is going to be really corny, so I'm hoping you guys can understand it. So. Uh, that guy is squeaking, I don't know why, but I'll catch you guys later, subscribe, rate, comment, and once again, if you guys would like any, uh, any cars tuned, let me know.